I'm Robert Woodward, and I'm standing outside of Rinfrew Hall, which houses the Department of Chemistry for the University of Idaho. Today, you and I are going to learn how to operate safely in a chemical laboratory. Let's get started. Now, the first thing we'll do is introduce you to the building. Malcolm Rinfrew Hall was named after Dr. Malcolm Rinfrew. He founded the Department of Chemistry and Physics for the University of Idaho in 1959. The department chair and the department administrative staff work here. This is where you go if you don't know where to go. Aside from that, the first floor houses mostly classrooms rather than research laboratories. Safety is important in this building. Every floor comes equipped with an emergency eyewash station and shower. Every floor also has several fire extinguishers located in the hallways. And every floor but the first has an emergency telephone with a list of contacts. Every floor also has a fully stocked first aid kit. But the first floor, compared to the other three, has fewer labs and relatively fewer hazards. Let's go on down to the basement. I'll show you what I mean. The main feature of the Rinfrew Hall basement is the Kim Stores facility. Let me introduce you to Mr. David Sargent. He's the manager of the Kim Stores facility. Dave, could you take a moment to tell us about safety equipment, safety related issues, or any potential hazards down here? I'd be glad to. Come on back. Kim Stores carries a number of items for your personal protection. We carry lab coats, Goggles for splash protection, as well as eyeglasses for impact protection. We also carry a variety of different gloves of different materials for working with different chemicals, as well as different sizes and thicknesses. Down here, we also carry heavy duty gloves for working with hot materials up to 1500 degrees. We carry sharps containers for all your sharps and needles so we don't have any of those laying around on the bench top. As well as dust masks because I sell to people, not just chemists, but people that work outside in the field and would like to be able to breathe. We also carry a variety of chemicals in chem stores. We separate them according to whether they're acid or base, organic or inorganic. This is our dispensing room where we dispense ethanol as well as acetone. We always have our goggles when we're dispensing because we don't want to splash any of this in our eyes. We also have wires attached to our dispensing apparatus so we don't build up any static discharge on anything and then have it throw a spark while we're dispensing it and have a fire down here. One of the items we carry in chem stores that people really enjoy is liquid nitrogen. It's pretty cool. It's also very cool on your eyeballs, and that's why you wear goggles, because you don't want your eyeballs frozen in case anything should happen to go wrong while you're dispensing it. You also like to keep your hands mobile, so we wear gloves for the thermal protection. This special hose is designed not to freeze, or at least it does freeze, but you can still move it around. At the bottom, you'll see all this wonderful gas coming out, that's the gas phase of liquid nitrogen, and you can see how it's getting darkened in here, and that's the liquid phase. And that stuff that looks kind of like water, that's liquid nitrogen. I noticed that we have a lot of trash cans back here. Is this where chemical waste goes? These trash cans are for ordinary waste only. Hazardous chemical waste, we run through environmental health and safety. We'll come back to the issue of waste disposal. Thanks for your time. Thank you. This is an NMR facility, Nuclear Magnetic Resonance. An NMR machine has a very strong electromagnet inside, so you'll notice a warning sign for a strong electromagnetic field. This is an NMR instrument. You should never stand this close to one if you have a pacemaker, or metal implants, or keys, or electronics in your pockets. The magnet in this machine might damage the magnetic strip on your debit card, but it won't erase your debt. 
But standing close to one of these things is actually relatively safe compared to other areas in this building. The real hazards are in the laboratories. Come on, I'll show you. The second and third floor of Rinfru Hall have a number of teaching labs as well as research labs. Here on the second floor, we have an office called Lab Services, which is where you go if you're an undergraduate student who has questions about lab work. But today, I'd like to take you inside a research laboratory. But before we do, I'd like to take a moment to sit down with a chemistry professor to talk with you about safety. Thank you for meeting with us, Professor Edwards. Glad you could come. What can I do for you? We're learning about working safely in a research laboratory. Is there any advice you could give us? Well, the first thing I would say is that most of the chemicals that you might be dealing with are not particularly dangerous. After all, water is a chemical. On the other hand, this is a chemistry building, and chemistry labs are not necessarily the safest environment. So you should not be in a chemistry lab unless you have a very good reason to be there. You should have an expert understanding of the hazards involved with those chemicals. And, of course, you should be careful. This is what we expect of all of our researchers. Now, in the 50 years that they've been doing research in this building, we have not had a serious incident that caused serious injury or loss of life. Not all chemistry departments in the U.S. can actually make that claim. So what do I need to know to stay safe? Well, there's many things to learn. The first thing I would tell you is that if you're a beginner, you should treat every chemical as if it was a hazardous chemical and every chemistry lab as a possible danger source. This is a chemistry building, and we have lots of dangerous chemicals. We have toxic chemicals, and we have very toxic chemicals. We have highly flammable chemicals, and we have extremely flammable chemicals. We have oxidizers that can provide oxygen to feed a fire. We have corrosive chemicals that will burn your skin on contact. And we have chemicals that will cause serious environmental harm if they're not disposed of properly. We have chemicals that are not, strictly speaking, considered toxic, but may be harmful or irritating when you're exposed to them. And we have things that can explode. As a general rule, you should always know the specific hazards of any chemical you might be working with. Now, a good starting point is the warning labels that come on the chemical containers. Often these are little orange squares with a symbol on the inside. But how can I learn all of the hazards related to the chemicals I'm working with? Well, it takes time, but it is absolutely necessary. And a good starting point is your coworkers and your colleagues. You should try to learn as much as you can from them. Okay, I'll do that next. Thanks for your time, Dr. Edwards. My pleasure. I'm stepping into one of the research laboratories. Before you enter a research laboratory, it's absolutely necessary that you're wearing long pants and closed-toed shoes to protect yourself. Here to meet me are two of the graduate students, Jones. Hi, Mr. Woodward. And Mega. Hi, Robert. Nice to meet you. Same here. Now, the single most important piece of protective gear in a lab is safety goggles or glasses. Thank you. Next, it's advised to be wearing a lab coat if you're going to be working in a research lab. Thanks again. It's my pleasure. Finally, chemistry is done with the hands. So unless I'm working with chemicals that I know to be absolutely safe, it's important that at all times I wear protective disposable safety gloves. Here. Thank you. You're welcome. It's also important that these gloves do not contaminate anything outside of the lab. So before I leave, it's important that I dispose of them here in the lab. So, am I ready to go now? Sure. But first, there are some basic rules that you need to know. Unless you know different. Always assume that any substance in any jar or bottle in this lab is potentially toxic. You don't bring any chemical anywhere near your face or your mouth. Okay, so don't smell the chemicals. Yes. Also, never ever drink or eat in the lab. No eating in the lab? Yes. Also, you don't smoke or apply cosmetics or do anything stupid such as running around or throwing stuff around in the lab. I think I can handle that. Nope. There is more. Always remember to wash your hands before leaving the lab. 
keep your work area very clean. In the case of any spillage, always remember to handle it immediately and responsibly. And then one last thing, you need to stay focused because you need common sense to be successful in this lab. Can you handle that? Sure. Then follow Mega. Okay, so probably the main concern in here is the prevention of fire. We have a lot of flammable solvents in our lab, so a small fire could quickly become a big disaster. To minimize the risk, we keep all our flammable solvents inside this flame cabinet. As you can see, we have hexanes, ethyl acetate, methanol, ethanol, and all the other volatile and flammable solvents in here. I use these flammable solvents safely every day, but I'm also aware of the risks of fire. We also have in here a fire extinguisher and a safety shower, but I hope I will never have to use them. We keep small amounts of this flammable solvent outside the cabinet in plastic bottles such as this. For example, this is a bottle of ethyl acetate. Always remember that when you hold such a bottle, you have a low boiling and flammable solvent and keep it away from potential source of fire or electronics. Every lab has different needs and preferences, so you won't find a universal system for storing chemicals. From safety perspective, we keep our flammables and corrosive separated from everything else. Here is a bottle of sulfuric acid. It would be very harmful if it spilled on your skin. The sulfuric acid also reacts with many other chemicals in our lab very violently. Compounds that react with water are kept in desiccator. Desiccator is a drying cabinet. For example, lithium aluminum hydride. LAH has a tendency to react with water explosively. If there is a water spillage in the lab and LAH comes in contact with water, it may explode and start the fire. We also have a chemical refrigerator. Mostly we keep most sensitive and volatile substances in this refrigerator, but obviously, Nobody keeps food in here. Storing chemicals is one thing, but opening them up and using them is something else entirely. How would I go about using the toxic chemicals stored in the refrigerator? This is a bottle of isoprene. This compound is very hazardous to my health. I would never open this bottle out here. I would straight away take it to the fume hood and set it down in there. We do almost all our reactions inside the fume hood. When I'm working in the fume hood, I know that the airflow is in one direction and I will not inhale or be splashed by anything as long as the sash is down far enough. In here, I can open this bottle and remove what I need from inside. I would use a disposable pipette for this liquid compound. It is not difficult to make certain that nobody ever learns what this compound smells like. The compound and everything that it touches always remains sealed or in the fume hood. For the very toxic compounds, we take special care to make sure that nothing gets out into the lab. All contaminated glassware or equipment would be washed in the fume hood. Let me tell you how we dispose chemical waste in our lab. None of the chemicals can ever go down the drain. We separate our chemical waste into several categories and collect it into different waste bottles and containers like these two. Full waste containers labeled with their contents are submitted to Environmental Health and Safety Office by using an online form. The EHS staff comes to our lab and takes away all the waste bottles to be disposed of by professional disposal facilities. The last thing I want to cover today is getting additional safety information for any given chemical compound. For example, I have here a bottle of benzyl bromide. There is safety information found on the label. For example, benzyl bromide is irritating to eyes, respiratory system, and skin. Always wear eye and face protection. There's also a CAS number. It's the one with two dashes, 100-39-0. Now, benzyl bromide might have many different names, but it only has one CAS number, 100-39-0. Further safety information for any commercially available compound is found on the MSDS, or Material Safety Data Sheet. Hard copies are located in most laboratories. 
but today they can be easily accessed online. I'll show you how. Using any web-based search engine, you could search for a chemical compound by name, but I prefer to do it by cast number. For benzyl bromide, that's 100-39-0. Add MSDS to the end of the search and hit enter. The top result here is from Fisher Scientific, a chemical company. We're going to click on it. This brings up the MSDS information for benzyl bromide. The very top has the basic information for the chemical compound. We're going to skip down to section 3, hazards identification. Now under potential health effects, you can see for the eyes it can cause irritation. Further down is section 4, first aid measures. In case you get it in the eyes, immediately flush eyes with plenty of water for at least 15 minutes, occasionally lifting the upper and lower eyelids. Get medical aid. There's plenty of information in here for firefighting measures, accidental release, and a variety of other things. It's important to realize that the more you know, the safer you are in here. Never become too comfortable and always consider your safety and that of your colleagues with every action you take in a chemistry lab. If you're not absolutely certain about what to do, don't improvise. Find someone who does know and ask for help. We haven't had time to cover everything comprehensively. I advise you to take time to read about laboratory safety on your own. There are many books on the subject. I recommend Safety in Academic Chemistry Laboratories by the American Chemical Society. You should learn the names of the most hazardous materials. The bottom line is simple. Every chemist in this building must do research safely. This is your responsibility, and it takes effort, but the results are worth it. And remember, always wash your hands before leaving the lab.